We are on Duncan Creek, which is a small tributary to Bayou Pierre, which uh, Duncan Creek confluences with Bayou Pierre about 2,500 feet downstream of us. Bayou Pierre is about a thousand square mile watershed that flows into the Mississippi River about uh, just downstream of Vicksburg. Uh, there's been a lot of degradation in the Bayou Pierre watershed over the last 50 years or more. We're about 40 to 50 miles upstream of its confluence with the Mississippi River. The drivers for the degradation uh, could be a number of things. We have not completed our geomorphic assessment for this system yet, but we're looking into that. But one of the uh, obvious potential main drivers for this could be the lowering of the Mississippi River in the 1930s and 40s, where the flow lines were reduced anywhere from 10 to maybe 14, 15 feet. That would lower the base level of Val Pierre, triggering uh, an oversteeping zone of head cutting to work up through the system. As I said, we're 40 or 50 miles upstream of that now here in 2024. And the reach of the Bal Pierre just downstream of here is a severely degrading and widening reach. And hopefully we'll get to see that here in just a bit. But as Bal Pierre has dropped, and we do have some comparative LIDAR profiles that show several feet of degradation on Bayou Pierre in the last six or seven years, then the base level for this small watershed of Duncan Creek was also lowered, and now head cutting is migrating up this system. We're, as I said, we're about 2,500 feet upstream. We're, as we walked in from the bridge just upstream, we were coming down, we were seeing some, some clay outcrops, some small little uh, oversteeping zones with nick points in them uh, and now we're at this point in the stream and we've got a lot of sand and gravel and locations in the stream but as I'm probing the bed with the tile probe I'm in this area I don't have to probe very deep through the sands before I hit a pretty uh, fairly resistant clay layer which we can see in the banks and we'll get some pictures of that and we're looking at a a bank here on the left bank that's probably over maybe two to three foot bench, which is an indication that the channel has degraded through that, which would make sense. It just hasn't widened it out completely yet. As the degradation is migrating up through this reach, as it's lowered, any tributary or even small drains that flow into it have their base level lowered. And that's what we're seeing right here. This is just a small field drain that's coming into Duncan Creek. And we've got about a three foot, nearly vertical drop hung up in this hard clay here. And this is what we call a perch tributary. And these are one of the, the field manifestations we look for when we're walking these creeks. When you're trying to understand whether a stream is aggradation, degradation, there's a lot of things we look at. Uh, one of the key things, if you have gauges on your stream, you can look at uh, gauge records, specific gauge records, or maybe you've got com comparative surveys. But then we look for these field indicators of degradation. But when you see a, a tributary hung up like this, it's running in some of the same clay that the main channel of Duncan Creek is, but it doesn't have near the drainage area and water or stream power to erode that. So they lag behind the main channel many, in many cases. So I'm often looking for these tributaries and sometimes we have to walk back, you know, several hundreds of feet to see what's going on. It's hard to put a, 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 a temporal aspect of, you know, how long that's been since the degradation has come through here, but it definitely is a sign that we've had a good two to three feet of lowering uh, in the channel through here. As far as the stage of evolution uh, of this channel, uh, I'm going to be using uh, the Shum et al. five-stage channel evolution model. I also use Andrew Simon's six-stage, or I could use uh, uh, Colin Thorne's <coughs> eight-stage. Here I see the channel definitely we have an incising degradational channel. We're starting just to start to see some erosion, some, some bank failures, a few trees are down. 
So I would call this a type two tending toward a type three. Uh, we're not in a complete uh, blowout situation where the banks have widened out dramatically and the trees are just falling in. I think we'll see some uh, cases of that later. Uh, but one of the things that happens in a lot of these streams to have this clay, this clay that's in the banks, we've got this three foot ledge of clay, that helps retard that widening. So maybe we don't see the widening occurring quite as rapidly as if the whole bank was more uh, erosive, maybe sandy material. As we walk further upstream, we'll probably uh, start to engage more into a type uh, one type channel. And as we go downstream, I think we're going to tend more into the type three. But we see through here much wider, probably two to three times wider in here than we were just 700 feet upstream or so uh, at the last site. And you can see that when I'm looking in here, I see some little riffles. These are clay outcrops in the bed. I see a lot of sand and gravel, but I'm also seeing these little nick zones, which are just little oversteeping zones that have been hung up on that clay. And we're seeing that all the way through here. Each of those by themselves is maybe not more than a few inches or six inches of drop, but cumulatively over several hundred yards, they can account for several feet. And, and that's what often happens. And then these, um, these nick zones, which may consist of a series of very small uh, nick points, as they migrate upstream, if they encounter some really resistant material, maybe almost a bedrock or the farmer's crossing which is concrete if it's built to withstand it, then these will coalesce into a near vertical overfall and you'll have a, maybe a six foot vertical nick point at one location. But it's just as these migrate upstream. So, and then that would fail and then that would migrate upstream just depending on what, you know, and how it migrates and how these move through here is dependent on the, the materials. I'm seeing a very wide section down here, and I think Stanford will be taking some pictures, but you can see a bench that comes out there, and that's where the old channel bottom probably was. It just hasn't been eroded out yet. It's going around it, but that could probably get eroded away uh, in the next few hydrographs. So uh, this channel, we're seeing more degradation down here than we saw upstream. The banks are higher and a lot more instability. Uh, you can see that there are some trees in here and they just exacerbate the, the, the bank widening. And we're not in the channel right now, but if we were, I, I can assure you as I probe the bed, I'm gonna be having you know less than a foot of sand or gravel all through here. It's probably gonna be a few inches or so. And I'm thinking we're probably a thousand feet or so upstream from Bao Pierre. Here we are now uh, on Bao Pierre. Uh, the main channel. We're up at Highway 28 uh, and this is about uh, maybe 1500 feet upstream of where we were with Duncan Creek and we had the video along Bow Pierre a thousand two thousand feet downstream of here and we could see some really dynamic channel widening and a lot of instability in the channel down there. So we know we've got this oversteeping zone of degradation migrating through this channel and we're starting to see it migrate up into this uh, Highway 28 area. If we'd have been here a few years ago, maybe five, 10 years ago, this channel would have been much smaller than it is now. Looking downstream, we can see in the channel some trees that are falling in and this is a consequence of the, the bed lowering and the degradation that's migrating up into this area. There's also under the bridge, the highway department has riprap around the bridge and they place riprap along the bed of the channel. Now they do that a lot and it serves as a, I'll call it a temporary grade control because it's, it's providing some riprap that's holding up the grade, but unfortunately these these uh, structures are really not designed to provide true gray control for a long time. So ultimately they often will fail. But in this particular case, there's several feet of drop that is hung up under the bridge today. And we've got a, a, a good plunge pool action downstream of that drop. And this is very common when you have a natural nick point or gray control where you have a vertical drop or even a sloping 
a, a, a steep sloping uh, structure, you'll get these large blowouts downstream like we see here. We've got the erosion on the right bank and the left bank. And if these get too wide, they can flank this entire structure. So one of the issues for the highway department is they are sitting here looking at some erosion that's occurring right here and they they may not be aware that this erosion is associated with a system-wide problem of degradation they think it may think that it's a local uh, expansion or just local erosion associated with their structure and and if and that's the case they won't have the appropriate uh, solution for it uh, in this particular case i do believe the highway department has been made aware of some of the downstream degradation. And, but that's a common issue that we see a, a problem and we focus locally on it and we don't understand that this is a local problem that's been uh, driven by a downstream issue like channel degradation. So this is, I'm sure if we were to be able to walk downstream, should be able to see this channel transition from this area up in here where it's primary downcutting into a wider, more type three type channel.